Center with a quick word to our nation regarding prophets. The word says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And why do they perish for lack of knowledge? Because they shut up the true prophets. True prophets are rare. And true prophets suffer a lot. And true prophets are not liked. And true prophets are strange and weird and they go through all kinds of things. But when the nation is working correctly, the prophet is working in line with the pastor. And when the pastors begin to shut out the true prophets, that's when the church becomes sick and that's when the sheep perish for lack of knowledge and they become scattered like sheep without a shepherd. And when you look at the prophets in the Bible, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all these incredible prophets, they're not liked. They get thrown in a pit. They have to wander around naked to show God's nakedness. Hosea had to marry a prostitute to show the unfaithfulness of Israel at that time. The John the Baptist had to call out repentance as he lived in the wilderness and he got, of course, beheaded. So it's not much fun, but if people would listen to the prophets, then they would have the knowledge they need to face the day and the time that we're in. And as you can see, our financial situation in America right now is a disaster. And it is sketchy going on in the world right now. But if you would listen to a prophet, you would know that this was coming. And you wouldn't put your trust in riches. And you would know that God will help you through this famine. And He does want to feed you. But judgment has to come when things are so out of whack. And the way I was feeling last night, I was in a group of unbelievers. And they are people who are in the media and they run a lot of our media. I mean, they're writers. And I didn't feel God's judgment over them. And he says, judgment first has to come from, to the house of the Lord. But I felt God's heart for them like sheep without a shepherd. Like, there's no, the church has become so right-wing, political, uh, prosperity-minded that we have left God out in so many ways. And when I came home last night, I was weeping with compassion at these people that are like sheep without a shepherd. I believe that one of Satan's big things that he does is line up agendas. He'll, there'll be a, a great move of God and it, then it might become in the political sense. And then Satan will take one of his agendas and line it up with that. So you end up throwing out the baby with the bathwater. And I think he's done that, say, with the environmental movement because we end up, Satan's lined it up with world peace, like one world government, like all of us connected, harmonious, you know, the peace symbol, like all that stuff has been linked up with the environmental issue of taking care of our earth and being responsible and sustainable energy and all of those things. And I, I, I just am asking people as a prophet, as a shepherd to discern those things. So you don't throw out one and take the other, um, I mean, you discern it so you can actually be part of the environmental movement, which is really, really important as believers. Also, he lines up the civil rights movement with the gays and the lesbian movement. They join in with that and say, we want to be part of the civil rights movement. I believe those are agendas that come from the enemy. I believe that true prophets are out there crying in the wilderness. And 
I feel great because I haven't trusted in riches. I am prepared. But the problem with prophets is that we have no comfortable place. We're hearing God. We're trying to hear God. We're hearing God ideally all of the time. We're really hearing God. So we're trying to hear Him and be like a voice. So we're like never happy because never no one's ever good enough, including ourselves, because we're hearing the perfect God, but then we also have this incredible heart of compassion because we're feeling the heart of Yeshua, of Jesus, who saved the whole earth. We're feeling that dual heart of God, the Father and the Son. We really feel that as prophets. I really, really feel that. So we're operating in this place that is like a spokesman for God. And it's terrifying. It's not an easy place to be. But if people would listen to the prophets, if the church would listen to the prophets, instead of throwing the prophets out because they want whatever they want, instead of really listening, then we could really be full of knowledge. Our nation could be really full of knowledge. And I want to talk more about how God does work in the political realm through prophetic words I've heard from the Lord. And it's just a little glimpse, but I think it's very cool. And I think right now God is leveling the playing field. I think he's going to do something different, something extraordinary. I think he wants to show both sides something about himself. And I also think that the way our nation was going, we almost had to have some judgment because we can't just keep going with the greed and the sin. And it's like there has to be a day of reckoning. If we have a good God who loves us, if he really loves us, then, and he blessed us so much, this nation, and then we reject him, or we want him to be in our little box with us, in our little belief system, and or we outright reject him as unbelievers, and as believers we box him up, and he blessed us, and we went further into our sin, or further into our little boxes, and we become further and further and further away from God, if he really was God, wouldn't he pull us back in to himself? And doesn't that, isn't that part of what he does when we have a time of judgment? Um, I, in Psalm 89, it talks about rejecting God towards the end of Psalm 89. We, we reject the one who chose us. And then we experience a time of suffering, but then God is merciful with his covenant and he draws us back into himself. And I think this is a time for us to really find out more of who he is. And let the prophets speak. Listen to the true prophets. Turn off the channels and other methods that are bringing you prophecies that are not coming true because then you can wear the proper attire. You can be full of the knowledge that you need for the time. In Jeremiah 28, there's Hananiah, who's a false prophet, and there's Jeremiah, who's a true prophet. And Jeremiah says to the people, we're going to go through a time of trouble and you're going to have to wear a yoke of wood. It's God was speaking through Jeremiah to prepare the people for a time of trouble. Hananiah said, no, no, there's no trouble. It's going to be peace and prosperity, and you don't have to wear a yoke. Silly Jeremiah, laughing and mocking at Jeremiah. Well, what happened was the people, of course, wanted to listen to Hananiah, and when the hard time came, they instead had to wear a yoke of iron weighted down with a yoke of iron because they weren't prepared. So my people perish for lack of knowledge, and that means all people, 
they perish for lack of knowledge, and I want to be a voice in the wilderness, crying in the street to bring people into the knowledge of God so that you can be prepared and you'll be standing on a rock. And that's what I'd like to do with this Mystic Center. And I, I just ask right now you would watch what's happening as God, I believe, is going to level the playing field. He wants all people to come to Him in our nation and to repent and become close to Him and find out who He is and what He wants from us. <music>